Hi, I'm Dick Rhodes, and what I'd like to do today is introduce you to the Snappy Premium line of drilling accessories. We're going to start out here today with our countersink. And one of the questions that everybody always has is just how good is it? Well, you know, we're proud of the fact that Snappy is made here in the United States, but we feel you need to back that up. So rather than bore you with a lot of words, let's show you something here that we've always found to be a little bit interesting. This is a piece of steel, and if I walked into your shop and said, let me borrow one of your countersinks, and we drilled into a piece of steel like that, how long would your countersink last? When will we owe you a new one? How well does Snappy hold up? Well, let's take that same countersink and come right in here to this piece of cherry. Love to drill into cherry because if it's dull, we're going to get burned, we're going to get smoke. No burn, no smoke, and you still have shavings. Now, there's a few other features about the Snappy countersink that makes it stand out from the others. Number one, why did it hold up like that? Through hardened steel, hardened out to a 62 Rockwell. Whenever you're drilling with different sizes of material, you need to extend your bit out. One of the major complaints a lot of our customers tell us about with a lot of the countersinks are the set screws are just too small. Not only are they too small, they're too soft. They strip out. So what we do at Snappy is we put an oversized set screw in, and the set screw itself is harder than the Allen wrench. So when you want to adjust the drill bit, simply insert your Allen wrench in, give it a turn, bring the drill bit out to the desired length. Now speaking of drill bits, occasionally they do wear out, sometimes they even break, and one of the beauties of Snappy is that we use a standard drill bit. No special milled flat spots, just a standard off-the-shelf bit that you can get anywhere and replace. Now there's two styles of bits that we use with our countersinks. We use a straight bit, and a straight bit is used predominantly with a straight screw. Back in the old days, a lot of our wood screws or more of a tapered design. If we look at both of these screws side by side, you may notice that we've got a very thick neck on the, on the silver colored one, where the black screw there is pretty much a straight design. The silver screw is more of a tapered design, and it represents the way wood screws are made for years and years and years. If you prefer to use that style of screw, then you need to drill a tapered hole. So it's snappy to help you take care of that. The exact same quality countersink, this time simply mounted into a tapered bit to go right along with it. It'll regardless of whether you desire tapered or straight, you're going to find the same oversized set screw in hardened steel. Now occasionally, whenever you're working with a countersink, you don't want to drill a deep hole and you don't want to plug the hole up. We want to build an Adirondack chair. We want to do something where we're going to drill a shallow hole. So we have to control the depth of our countersink. This is a steel collar that's optional. Beats the heck out of a piece of tape. Goes into position just like so. Again, a small Allen wrench locks it in place. And just like this, you've now set your snappy countersink up to do a true countersink. Or if we were going to build an Adirondack chair, we could bring this in. And every single hole is going to stop at exactly the same depth. Now, of course, the real truth is how the drilling action is received. So let's do something here we think you'll find kind of interesting. Let's grab a bit and a screw. And if you've ever struggled to run a screw down into a piece of wood, I think you'll really appreciate the beauty of how nicely Snappy works and enables you to bring that right down into your project, just like so. And there we go, perfectly flush to the surface. Now, occasionally when you're dealing with wood, we want to put two pieces of wood together. And we want to make sure that we don't get any pull out or spread. And that's the idea behind the whole snappy system, because the system is designed to work together. One of the first things that you're going to notice above and beyond the countersink is how simple it was for us to go from the countersink to the driver bit and that's because of the snappy quick change chuck. Okay, what we've done here is we've installed the quick change chuck into your drill. And what we'd really like to show you is how smooth of action the quick change chuck has. What's patented about the snappy quick change chuck is the way the internal mechanism allows you to simply snap the product in. The beauty of this is if you're standing on a ladder or in an awkward position, simply take your middle finger, pull back on the quick change chuck, take your index finger and thumb and remove the item. So as you can see, going from one item to another item 
becomes a one-handed operation. That makes life real easy to work with. Hi, I'm Dick Rhodes, and we're here to show you just a little more of the Make It Snappy family. One of the last things we're going to do on our projects is we're going to install our hinges. And this is the last area that you want to make a mistake because what will have happened is you'll have already applied your stain and your clear finish. So you want to make sure you get everything right. And the question I'd like to ask you is anybody here ever played what I call the hinge lottery? Now the hinge lottery is gambling that you can get those three holes perfectly dead center for the screws because if the screws are slightly out of center, as they tighten up on the hinge, what it's going to do is it's going to throw that hinge slightly off center and of course then your doors aren't going to hang properly. So to take care of this, we use what we call a self-centering hinge bit. Now the self-centering hinge bit is designed with a nose bushing that is spring loaded and that allows the drill bit to come out and drill our pilot hole and the nose bushing automatically centers it up into our hinge. It goes right into the bevel on your hinge. Now there's a real simple little hint I want to give you here. If you try to drill all three of those holes while you're holding on to the hinge, invariably the hinge will move on you. So take advantage of your quick change chuck. Drill one hole and replace your self-centering hinge bit with a driver bit. And then what we're going to do is come and anchor that hinge down with our first screw. Now, the hinge is anchored in place, so our next step is really quite simple. Allow the machine to do the job. If anyone here has ever tried to install hinges, when is the last time you got those holes centered up exactly that perfect? That's what having the right tool does for you. Now one of the challenges that you're going to run into occasionally is that sawdust will jam up inside the nose bushing. And what happens is that spring contracts and the drill bit sticks out. And sometimes we can just give it a little tap and it'll come back. That wasn't clogged up very bad. But if you let that sawdust continue to build up inside there, eventually it'll get jammed up. And what you have to do on every other self-centering drill bit is loosen up the set screw and then when that set screw comes loose, because of the compaction of that spring, the whole thing just kind of wants to explode on you. So what we've done at Snappy to make it real simple is we've added some knurls right here. And you grab the knurl and you simply take it apart. Once you've spun it apart, clean your sawdust out. And that easily you're back up and going again. Now occasionally people will ask us if this is a standard drill bit. And the answer is no. This is the only case where we actually use the specialty bit. Why? We put a twist in a drill bit to pull the sawdust up out of the hole. So if the twist went all the way back like it would on a standard drill bit, what it would be doing is sucking the sawdust back in there and simply aggravating the problem. So this is one of the times when we use the specialty bit because there's a special reason to do it. Always make sure that that little brass washer is between your nose bushing and your spring. It acts as a natural lubricant between those two. And as long as that's in there, you're going to get years and years of use.